focus on that strength that you have, okay? And just do it from the heart. Don't do it for the quick money. Like do it because you respect the industry and you want really add, want to add value to it. I was born in Addis Ababa uh, a long time ago. <laughs> uh, born to a family with two boys and I'm the only girl. It was a fun, very protected childhood. I would say uneventful. So as soon as I finished high school, I went to the US for higher education. So Flawless Events came to be in 2004 in the US. All right, so I had already gotten my MBA and I was living in Washington DC with a, two of my best friends. And we lived, and these are girls that we grew up together. We went to Lycée, we all went our different ways and then came back together as adults, right? And we were all working nine to five, but we realized we never have enough money. Either we were spending it the wrong way, we just didn't know how to manage our money, okay? So we said, let's start a business. And we didn't know what we wanted to do. So we started playing with different ideas and we realized we all like to throw parties and we like being part of the party. Whenever we go to events put together by different African institutions, we always thought, ah, oh, it's always disorganized. So we said, let's do an event company. And we were open to doing social events, corporate events, whatever, any event related uh, activity that was for the African community, right? We're like, okay, but you know, what was it that we had to offer? What would our events, our company do different than other companies? And we said, we, we want it to be seamless. We want it to be perfect. So we're trying to come up with a perfect name, perfect events, seamless events. And then we, Flawless just came from literally brainstorming. And then we had a really good friend who was a graphic designer and, I, and he's drawing out different ideas as we're talking. And then that squiggly thing you see on the logo, as that was it was born. So Flawless and the logo was born, you know, amongst various drinks and brainstorming sessions. After about two, three events, a couple of our friends said, this sounded more fun than it actually is, so we don't want to do it anymore. So it just ended up being two of, out of four girls, two of us kept on doing it. So we had an opportunity to do a few weddings, um, fundraising events, fashion show. And so within our small community, we had a name going for ourselves. Uh, that was flawless in the US. Then in 2008, um, or 2007 rather, we came to Addis just to visit because I hadn't been back in 15 years. And um, I had no intention of doing flawless here. So I figured, I have my degree, I've been educated in the US, I've worked in US institutions, I could probably get hired here, right? So I um, was talking to different friends, trying to see, I was, you know, giving out my CV, saying, who do you think will hire me? Would it be the AU? Would it be the UN? Should I try the embassies and so forth? And one friend said, I thought you said you like doing events. And I said, yeah, yeah, but you know, that's more part-time. And they're like, well, you should really consider doing events in Ethiopia because there really is a lack of uh, event companies here. I said, okay. And uh, I did that one event in 2008. It was a international continuing medical education. It was done for one of my very good friend doctors here and it was an absolute success. So with that event, Flawless was established here in Addis. That so that was pretty easy, right? So the requirement for capital was not that high. Um, you did have to have an office space in order to register your company, but outside of that, it was pretty easy to get a license. Plus, if you look at an event company or event services, you really don't have a lot of overhead, right? Because you're providing a service, so you just really need the very basic to get started. Part of the challenges at that time were Internet was on dial-up and because I was going after the international market that was a bit of a challenge trying to get connectivity and com communicating with people on a timely basis. Uh, what was it, collateral or I haven't been in the business long enough for me to ask the banks for loans and events is very cash intensive. A lot of people think events is very glamorous, right? Like you get dressed, you go to the parties, you know, you're mingling with people but when you're actually doing the events it's not that, you can ask my team. It's very tedious um, is that you're doing the same thing over and over again. Um, you have to be very detail oriented. You're co constantly communicating with your clients and your vendors and so forth. So it's definitely not because it's glamorous, but rather I think you just have to love it. You know, it's, the, it's that high when the event is done and you see your clients very happy, the attendees were satisfied and everything that was a challenge kind of comes together and you go, that was awesome. And so what makes us different is the level of uh, perfection that everybody strives to achieve. Um, we're all women, as you can see in the office. Uh, everybody has different set of skills that they bring to the table. And everybody just has the love for the, 
for the services that they do. So we might be the largest company um, for events in Ethiopia. We're definitely the leading as far as uh, innovative um, way of executing events. We have clients that we follow around the continent. So they would say, I'm having my next event in Rwanda, can you come and do it there as well? Um, you know, in Marrakesh, in Ghana, whatever. So we, it's such an honor when you hear clients say, oh, you know, follow me around, because a lot of times you see that happening with Western event companies, not necessarily African ones. So for us, it's a big tap on our back and it's just very encouraging as well. My advice to young people getting into the events industry or looking to start a business within the events industry, my first question would be, why do you want to do it, right? Um, is it because you think there's a lot of money in it or is it because you really find that there's a passion, that you have a passion for it, okay? So understand the market, understand what you bring to the market, what is the different element that you're going to be doing. Focus on that strength that you have, okay? And just do it from the heart. Don't do it for the quick money. Like do it because you respect the industry and you want really add, want to add value to it. So the three most important things for entrepreneurs to survive in Ethiopia uh, patience, loads and loads of patience, especially for people who want to move back. Um, and I would say that because it's not just for already Ethiopian based entrepreneurs, but even for those who are looking, who are saying, well, wait, if she made it, I also want to come back. I think have a lot of patience um, and uh, don't have any expectations. I think a lot of people come into any type of business by saying, this is why, how I expect things to go. So no expectations lots of patience, um, be honest, and people will honestly pick on that energy from you. I think uh, when you're genuine and honest in the way you present yourself and the way you present your business, you'd be surprised by how much you get back from other people.